Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. You know, it's interesting because when we talk about mining and gold production and how much is being bought and sold and in the markets, it's kind of really tough to peg down because it's so wide reaching. It's a very expansive industry and it touches a lot of different things and areas with both silver and gold. But gold is something that, <clears throat> you know, it's a uh, that the uh, the markets from the way it's produced and mined to how it's bought and sold by governments and mined by other governments it's really tough to really get a, a good idea and set on what, what the production is and so that's why people have differing opinions on peak production you may remember I posted a video a while ago about that we have passed peak production and uh, some experts have say that we've done so but then again who are these experts well we have another video as such this is from Kitco News <clears throat> where um, Cal Everett who's the president and CEO of Liberty Gold so take that for a grain of salt but he's done some crunching of the numbers and the numbers prove it and is very confident that we have hit peak production and he has some compelling arguments when you watch this video. I'm not going to play it. I will post a link to this video in the description because I think it'd be interesting to get your take on his thoughts unfiltered on the markets. But you may remember about, uh, I posted a video about other mines that have been discovered and they're going to be coming on production soon with a lot of gold being there. But according to this guy, Cal, there's, there's really not many new mines out there. And he's talking about all the geology that's involved. And that's something you have to think about too, because he is a geologist and claims to be a geologist, which means that you know all of the effort and research is going into brownfields development as opposed to greenfields development. And that's interesting because uh, when you look at that and where things are going, if there's demand for gold and the prices do go up, more than likely, there's going to be some research going into green fields, which means finding other sources of gold. Um, and what about these other mines that I did videos on that are coming on board and being used? You know, recently I posted another video in, about South Africa about how, you know, they're, they're using the deepest mine and they found this life form down there, but they're producing a lot less gold. Somebody had commented in that video that the reason there's a lot more gold in South Africa but because of the geopolitical situation or the domestic political situation, uh, there's not um, uh, much mining or new mines being put up because the economy is, is, uh, is uh, suffering in South Africa. But nonetheless, it's interesting to see, and uh, he's using data that he's provided from public, publicly available sources and he's compiled together and he's saying and he's making the claim that they have hit peak gold. But in the end, really, considering some of the stories we've, we've uh, covered on this channel and considering kind of the confidence that he has, do we really know? Have we really hit peak gold? And uh, there's other people who say that we've hit peak silver production as well too. And what, how do you define peak gold production? You know, he did confess that China is producing uh, gold, a lot of gold, and they're keeping every ounce that they that they uh, mine, which doesn't surprise me. But we'll never know those numbers. There could be literally a gold mine of gold mines in China, and we just don't know about it. And I'm sure there's other places around the world that we don't know uh, that are accumulating gold as well. And even here in the United States and North America. You know, how, what are we, and this guy, his company operates in North America. And uh, there's other other mines and stuff that uh, about what the numbers they get. What are those publicly available numbers? You know, there's a lot of things that um, what can they or what they are they required to share and what are they not? One other thing I found interesting from the interview, and he's talked about, you know, the all in cost. You know, there's an attempt by the. Uh, um, World Gold Council to make those numbers a bit more transparent. They've got a couple of criteria on the website where they talk about that. But uh, this gentleman mentions how, you know, with the all-in cost of about just over $300 for gold, but they're going to go up, he's saying, very soon. He says it's pretty much 
um, outside of any other influence, regardless of what the Fed does, regardless of any geopolitical situation, he believes that because of this peak gold production and because of increased demand, uh, that we're going to see gold prices steadily go up soon. And the interviewer uh, keeps trying to say that, so you're saying there's a lot of different factors and it may not happen. She's trying to give him outs to say, that, any kind of outs to say that possibly gold may not go up uh, soon, but he's saying it will go up soon. Now again, take all this for a grain of salt because he is um, in the business of gold. Um, he's the CEO and director of Liberty Gold. He's been at it a long time. And uh, you have to question some, yes, you question motives, but the other, uh, on, on the other hand, you give him, give him the benefit of the doubt because he's in this business. If he's wrong, then that's going to uh, be a little bit of a scar in his reputation. And, uh, and he probably doesn't want that. Neither of us would really want such a thing. But I do find it quite interesting. Let's take a look at the major points of this um, uh, scenario here. Uh, it says that when it comes to whether or not the mining industry has reached peak gold, the members speak for themselves. Sa the numbers speak for themselves, says Cal Everett, president and CEO and director of Liberty Gold. The declining production curves of the intermediate major producers are rolling over right now. You can see that on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis, every time a quarterly earnings report comes out, I pay attention to whether they met their projected amount of ounces, what their cash per ounce is, what their cash cost per ounce is, and what their all-in sustaining costs are per ounce. Everett told Kitco News on the sidelines of the Swiss Mining Institute conference in Zurich, Switzerland. And so, uh, in this Silver Mining Institute conference, it presents two major annual investment conferences per year in Switzerland. And each conference provides top quality independent perspectives from ex experts within the resources sector together with presentations from 10 selected mining companies. SMI invites over 400 selected asset managers, fund managers, and HNWI from Switzerland, Geneva, and Zurich. And participation in, in private events is by invitation only. So it's a pretty, um, pretty astute um, conference there. And, um, but very interesting indeed that, um, that, that this gentlemen feel strongly that we're going to see prices go up for gold very soon uh, because uh, we've hit peak production. Now, in the video that I posted about this quite a while ago, it, it should be noted that in the charts that were shown there, that we reached it probably in 2016, but yet, even though we had passed peak production, the production of gold was still very, very high in the, in the coming years. Um, or or will be in the coming years that there's going to still going to be producing a lot of gold, just not at the peak at the very top. It'll just be a little bit less and a little bit less each year, not enough to have that much of an effect on price. We'll see how it all pans out. It's interesting to kind of look over these things and see what people are saying in the industry. Um, but you know, as I look at these things, I do become somewhat of a spe uh, skeptic. Um, when I hear from people who are in this business, so to speak, uh, but I don't want to fully discount what they say either. Um, so it's just something to kind of pay attention to and we'll see what happens. If prices do go up in spite of what the economy does, well, you can refer back to this video. And if you've watched this, watched or watched the, uh, the interview on Kitco's website about this particular situation, it may give you some idea as to why this is happening with gold prices going up. Regardless, you look at the long uh, chart of gold, you know, it's held up pretty tightly. Um, it's not suffered the same dramatic losses that silver has, which has lost more than half of its cost price since its highs in 2011. You know, silver was up to almost $50 an ounce, and now it's uh, trading above, just above 14 whereas gold was up to $1,900 an ounce, and now it's at around $1,200 an ounce. So it hasn't lost quite as much as silver has. Still believe in silver. I believe silver is undervalued. We may see the same type of thing uh, occur with silver. It be interesting to talk to some of these silver miners and see what they're, what they're doing, and the same thing with the Silver Institute. Post your thoughts below about this situation and the story. What are your thoughts on it? Do you believe it? Do you discount it completely? 
Um, and uh, where do you think we'll go from here? Where do you think the price of gold will go from here? I'd like to extend the multitude of gratitude, y'all, for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>